morning. Good morning. Welcome to Gardendale, Mount Vernon. We are so excited that you have taken the time to join us here, whether you're here in person or whether you're watching online. We are just really looking forward to being able to worship the Lord together this morning. Uh, our consignment sale is coming up this week. That is really, really exciting. And for those of you who are here and uh, for the people that will be here in the next service, we are actually going to be setting up right after the 11 o'clock service. If any of you guys can be back here to help set up, that would be fantastic. We've got to set up the racks and everything for the sale. Um, and that will be open this week. Information has gone out on that. I believe that there are some slides that are up um, that you might be able to see on the online version as well. Uh, and if you have any questions about that, call here on the staff. We'll, uh, we'll get you hooked up. I think that... As far as I know, that's all that we've got. So if you guys would, oh, no, there's something else. Judy's got something else for me. Yes. So men's ensemble will be meeting tonight at 5.30. Any man that enjoys singing, show up. It's going to be fantastic. Where is that going to be meeting? In the choir room downstairs. Uh, and uh, as Judy was saying, we know that Pastor Steve has had COVID. We've been missing him two Sundays in a row. He is improving. He's doing much, much better. Uh, he should be back very soon. Um, but we're just recommending for anybody who is able and willing that we just wear masks. It's not a requirement, just recommending that we wear them as we, uh, as we go across the campus. And I think that with that, we are ready to pray into worship. So if you guys would just bow your heads with me and prepare our hearts to go into worship. Father God, we thank you so much for every person that is gathered here for worship, whether that be online or in person. God, I pray that you would open our hearts and minds to what it is that you are doing and that you are saying and how you're moving in this place. God, I pray that we would be encouraged by being able to come here and to worship with one another and to, to, to be in relationship and in communion with you. God, I just pray again that we would be open and receptive to what it is that you're saying and to what it is that you're doing. We love you so much, Jesus, and it's in your holy name we pray. Amen.
I'm not alone here in these open seas Your love never fails The chasm is far too wide Never thought I'd reach the other side When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain are all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear
in the world but God we know that you're here we know that you're real you know that you're always we know that you're always present and God we just want to draw closer to you and we know that through every single thing you work all things for our good God that's what you do so we just pray right now God standing in your presence we're waiting here for you. We're waiting here for you to mold us, to move us, and equip us, God. We just thank you so much, and we love you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen.
waiting for us actually to draw close to him.
Pray with me, please. Lord God, you bless us far more than we know. We thank you, God, for the gifts that you give us. And at this time, Lord, we give you back your tithe and our offering. It is a part of worship, Lord. And at this time, we are thankful that we can offer up to you. Lord, for all those who support your kingdom, may they be blessed. Lord, for those who are online and give online, Lord, thank you. But God, it is this time that we do offer up your tithe and our offering. It's in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to thank the praise band this morning, and I don't know if she's been in this before. Uh, it's the first time I've seen her here. But Abby Bean, thank you. Uh, man, that child can sing. Thank you, dear. That was absolutely beautiful. Now, I am taking this crazy mask off. I hate them. They make my nose run. They make me sweat. But... I will wear them if it will help my neighbor and if it will show love to my neighbor. This morning, we are going to talk about soil. Now, if you were here last week, we talked about salt. Salt and baking, soil and gardening. I don't do either and I don't like either. So I have no idea. But anyway, we're going to talk about soil this morning. So pray with me, please. God, you call us all for certain times and certain purposes and for such times as this. Now may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all our hearts together, be acceptable in your heart, Lord. You are our strength, our support, our rock, our hope, our redeemer. And now come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O oh God, who by the light of the Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful. Grant that we may be truly wise and ever enjoy your consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In my former life, I was a nurse. And I used to teach prenatal classes. Now, prenatal classes are for husbands and wives, and the wives are usually in, or for men and women, they don't have to be husbands and wives, it could be um, a woman and her significant other. Uh, but anyway, it's about the time when she's 
seven, eight months pregnant. If you're a woman, you know this is about the time when you're starting to feel it really, really bad. And you just don't think these nine months will ever be over. And so I came up with what's called a timeline. And if you'll look on the screen, you'll see this timeline. And what I did is said, okay, here's where you're born. Somewhere down here, you're going to die. You are somewhere in here. If you look how long it takes to go from one year to the next, all right, this is 25 years. So nine months is going to be a little bitty dot on that, that line right up there. And I told them, I said, spit in the bucket. It's a short time. And they would look at me like I had four heads and say, yeah, right. And I said, and I've been there, done that. I know, I know, but we will get through this. And I have often gone back to this timeline in my life when I feel like things are just not going right. And it's, it's helped that the time that I was going through the trouble and the chaos and whatever is short-lived. Then I start my faith journey and I end up taking a class called Companions in Christ. And in Companions in Christ, we had to draw our faith journey. Now, I was right here when I drew my faith journey. And the line is where you are just kind of yourself. But when the line goes up, it's where you're close to God. And as the line goes up and up and up and up, you're closer and closer to God. And as the line comes down, you're in a deep well, in a deep valley. Now, I'm going to share with you, as we talk through this sermon, my lifeline, or my, my faith journey. And you will be able to see how this fits into this passage, which is about the sower and the seed and the different uh, seasons of the soil. In creation, there are two stories in Scripture. It was a long time before I realized there were two stories about creation in, in, his, in Scripture. And I thought, well, which is right? But do you remember the one where it says, from dust we came? And what happened is then Jesus breathed into us. He made us whole. He breathed into us and gave us life. Now we're going to do something different again this week. I'm going to ask you to just sit there. And you have to trust me here. It's not going to hurt, I promise. But I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. And I'm going to ask you to just take some deep breaths. In and out. In and out. Remember your creator who created you. Who breathed life into your body. And then we hear in the Lenten season, from dust you came, and dust you shall return. One more breath, and then I invite you to open your eyes when you're ready. Oftentimes we don't have that silence, do we? that quiet, when we're actually in the presence of God and breathing the breath that God breathes in us. Now, the passage that we're, we're talking about today it comes from Mark, and it's the passage, it's a parable, and parables are wisdom statements of Jesus. It's a story with a point. It teaches us to have patience, with the persistence of evil. Look at that. 
have patience with the persistence of evil. This is a paraphrase from Joan Chittister I shared with you last week from the Monastic Way, in which we know that evil is all around. But she also goes on to say that we must remember that we're not the ones to fight evil until we get ulcers. Remember, God has the final judgment. Not us, but God. And now we're going to do something else a little differently. Something that I'm used to from my embedded faith is we used to stand for the gospel reading. So I'm going to ask you, if you're able, to please stand for the reading of the gospel. This passage comes from Mark 4. And this is where Jesus is by the seaside, and a very large crowd has come, and so he gets into the boat, and he pushes out into the water. And then he starts teaching them, saying this. Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and he sowed some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured it. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil, and immediately it sprung up since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it and yielded no grain. And the other seed fell into good soil and produced grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirtyfold, sixtyfold, and a hundredfold. And he said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, we're not done, but in between this time when we go to the next passage, the disciples come to Jesus and they say, what in the world are you talking about? Jesus was talking to his disciples at this point. He wasn't talking to the crowds, although he was talking to the crowds, but his message was meant for the disciples. And so he continues on to the disciples, and he says to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? And can't you see Jesus shaking his head? Can you not understand? If you're not going to understand this one, how can you understand all the rest I'm going to talk about? So he goes on. The sower sows the word, and these are the ones along the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones on the rocky ground, the ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they do not have root in themselves, but endure it for a while. Then, when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones among the thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of the word and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it proves unfaithful. But those that were sown on good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit. 30-fold, 60-fold, and a hundred-fold. This is the living Word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. So, what is the seed? Tell me. What was the seed representing in this passage? The Word, the Word of God. The seed, the seed is not a dead thing, is it? The seed is a living organism. A living organism. And so is the Word of God. 
a living organism. This is not an archaic book that was written years and years and hundreds and thousands of years ago. For us, way down here, 2,000 years later, no, this is the living Word of God that will talk to us at any point in our life. How many of you have read a passage from Scripture, you know, back some years ago, and then read it again and think, oh, that means something different. It's because you're in a different stage of life. It's because we are in a different place. And when we hear this parable, we think of people who are in these different stages, don't we? Oh, that one's in in hard soil. That one's in rocky soil. That one's in thorny soil. (laughs) I'm in good soil. I'm, I'm in good soil. But you know, I'm here to challenge us to think about this. We all are made from dust, and that dust creates soil, and we all have different types of soil in different seasons of our life. Sometimes we find ourselves on the path where there's hard soil. That's the path, and and, and back in Jesus' time, they would have fields, and in between the fields, there would be about three feet of, of land in which you wouldn't walk in the fields, but you would walk on this land and to go from down between the, two, the fields or between that field. And these paths got trodden down. They got worn down. The ground was very hard. And then there's the rocky soil. The rocky soil, there was a lot of limestone over there. And there would be a small layer of soil on top of the, the limestone. And so when the seed got sown on that soil, it would immediately take root and grow, but there were no, there were no roots. My daddy used to always tell me that half of the tree is above ground and the other two-thirds or whatever of the tree, a third of the tree was above ground, two-thirds of the tree was below ground. That's what it was. Two-thirds of the tree was below ground. So that's the roots. And so if we don't have soil conducive for roots to grow, then everything goes up. And then when the sun comes, we get burnt. And then there's that thorny soil. Now, it's good soil. It's good soil. But when the seed starts to grow, so do the thorns. And they're choked out. And of course, we know what the good soil is. Now, put up there my faith journey, and you see these numbers, and we'll talk about this. I'm going to show you. All right, here's birth. Right here, hard soil. I'm, I'm a baby. I don't know what in the world's going on. I, you know, I'm a baby. Well, I'm, I, I have the drug problem, too, and I'm drugged to church. So I, I'm, I have, I, I'm in this path right here. Okay? okay? So I, here I am. Here I am. Uh, it's about, and I get married, and I'm about 25. Well, once I get married, you know, I, I, I have a job. I've been in school. I go have kids. You know, all of a sudden here, I, I start to grow. I joined a church that was very active and, and very uh, reaching out to the, to the community and bringing people in. And, and so I, here I am, and where am I? Here I am. And so I start to grow. You know, that's the first time I was ever in a small group. After Sunday school, after I got married, after I graduated from high school, I never was in Sunday school. I never was in a small group. I didn't know anything about that. But I did here. I got into a small group. Oh, my goodness. I'll never forget that small group. It was absolutely amazing. I took Disciple Bible, Companions in Christ. Oh, my gosh, it was awesome. It was wonderful. And, man, I was growing. 
And then right here, my mother died. And you see what happened. Not only did I falter, but I mean I sunk, sunk. And I was down here for a long time in this grief basket. I'm not saying grief is bad. I'm saying we need to come alongside people when they're in grief. I needed somebody alongside me, and that's where, that's where this happened. Somebody started coming along beside me, and my path started growing. Now, this isn't marked out. This just shows you that sometimes I'm good, sometimes I'm rocky, sometimes I'm hard, sometimes I'm, I'm thorny, you know, but I'm still, I'm still, I, I still had good soil. So I'm not perfect, and I am up and down, up and down. But what you see is my journey. Now, what does Jesus say when he talks about the first one? He says the, the, the seed, some seed fell along the path and the birds came and devoured it. There are ones on the path where the word was sown. They hear it. Satan immediately comes, takes the word away that is sown in them. The word was sown in me. The word was sown in me. It got down into my heart. It got down into my subconscious. But I didn't hear it. I, I, didn't, I didn't see it. Hindsight's 20 20 as we often hear. And so later when I looked back, I saw where the word of God was preached to me, taught to me, but yet... I didn't understand at the time. And if I went back and read a passage from back then, it would mean something completely different now. A lot of people do not understand the Word of God. That's where we come in. That's where we come in to help Help them understand. You know, iron sharpens iron. And I'm going to tell you, there is not one single person on this earth who knows exactly everything that this Bible means. We have to work together. And when we're working together, Mike and I may be in a group, and, I, and Mike and I are talking, and I'm going, and Mike, you know, I've, I've heard so-and-so, so-and-so. And you go, well, you know, I've always heard so-and-so. And I went, oh, my gosh. I've never heard it quite that way. And it's all of a sudden like a two-by-four hits me on the head, and it's like, God's speaking to me. We need each other to help each other to grow. Now, sometimes on this path, it's hardness of life. You can look at mine, and you can see the hardness of life. I hit, I hit a time of grief. I hit a time of heartbreak. And heartbreak can be anything from, from a death to a loss of a job to a loss of a relationship, loss of material things. We're so materialistic. And loss of material things. And our heart closes down. We begin to feel disappointed and we begin to feel disillusioned. And so with these hurt hearts, the Word of God doesn't penetrate. Now, sometimes we choose not to, under, to understand, don't we? Listen to this quote from Collis. It's ironic, isn't it, that we can limit our understanding by the intellectual barriers we raise. Prejudices and certainties, opinions. I learned that when I was a kid. I know it's true. You can't tell me it's not true. I believe it. So be it. It's the gospel. Really? Really? Have we looked lately to see what the gospel says? So you see, sometimes opinions can get in the way. And when we choose to follow our own embedded faith, 
that we think is the Word of God, is it? Is it? And when we fall onto this path, things usually fall apart. A bad situation comes and you literally plummet. Look back at the screen on my journey. Right here. I absolutely plummeted. I met with our associate pastor. I had to, to um, counsel with him because I was in such a terrible state. He told me to write a letter to God. I did, and the first thing I said is, I hate you, God. And then I had to look around to make sure that, you know, he wasn't coming through the ceiling to get me because that's what I believed, a fearful God. But God let me work through it. And God gave me the strength to get through it and to go on. Okay, now we come to the second soil. Second soil. Okay, this is the limestone soil that has the small layer of, of good soil on it. But um, this, is, this is where the, the Word of God takes root. But there's no relationship with faith. It's all about a feeling. You know, we've had those mountaintop experiences where we come back and woohoo, we've been with God. It's been awesome. It's been amazing. And you can't tell me that God's not here with me. Spiritual retreats, Emmaus walk. We all have these things for us. But if we don't cultivate that faith with learning and with growth, it plummets. This is often called the shallow enthusiasm or the short-lived enthusiasm. Shallow faith. And you might even look in your life and, and you have shallow relationships, shallowness at work, but it's shallow. It's not very deep. Dr. Alexander Findlay says, it is easy to become a Christian. Easy. It's hard to stay one. It is very hard to stay one. He said, the best thing to do is start. Start and let people help you. These people enjoy the latest spiritual fad, the latest spiritual book, the latest worship style, the latest music, the latest world fashions, the latest cell phone, the latest you name it. You name it. Anything. It's a thrill to be hip. We want what's new, we want what's exciting, and what's not faith. And when we return later to faith, we say, you know, I just wasn't ready then. I wasn't ready. But you see, when we're in this soil, when trouble and persecution come, again, we fall. We fall into despair. And one thing that people in this group are looking for is belonging. When people come to church, they're looking for belonging. And we may be the friendliest church in the world, but if we have an inner core that doesn't allow anybody to come inside, they're going to look at us, and they're going to turn around, and they're going to walk out because they don't feel included. They don't plug in. And so our job when folks come in, is to plug in. Get out of our circle, get out of our inner crowd, and to help people find a place. The teen years are huge in this place. They're very peer conscious and very peer pressured. It's easy. It's easy to follow it, the peers. And we often see times in personal loneliness in this group. You can be lonely for a number of reasons. 
It doesn't have to be just a death. It can be anything. Anything. It's just when you feel alone and you feel like nobody cares and nobody has your back. We all need to belong. Weren't we created for each other? Weren't we created to belong together? And then the third one comes up. And others' seed fell among the thorns. The thorns grew up, choked it out, and it yielded no grain. And Jesus says, this is the rocky ground. The one who win, they hear the word immediately, receive it with joy. And they have no root in themselves. Wait a minute. Take that back. These are the ones who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desire, desires for other things enter in and choke the weed. You remember on my faith journey. Back again, please. Okay. Right here. There's three. That's thorny ground. I was just married. I had gone through nursing school. I had gotten a job. We moved. We had kids. I didn't go to church because nobody could take care of my kid, and I certainly wasn't leaving my kid in the nursery. I mean, that's my child. Nobody does as good as me. So I, didn't, I wasn't going to go to church, but then I said, okay, if I work in the nursery... I get to know the people, then I can leave my, my child in the nursery, which I did. Well, then we ended up getting transferred back here, so that didn't last long. But, but friends, work, family, all of it, good stuff. Tell, now I'm telling you, it's good stuff. There's nothing wrong in any of that. But you see what it did right here? Because it choked out my time with God. I didn't have time. I was so blasted, tired, by the end of the day, I, I just fell into bed. And when I got up, it was early to work. And when I got home, I had stuff to do. Went to bed. I feel your pain for the young moms. I know what you're going through. And now, now, schedules are even worse. You, you meet yourself coming and going. I hear it. I understand it. But you know, in and of themselves, all that is good, but when we're distracted from the gospel, when I let the gospel be Push down. You know, they say second best is the enemy, worst enemy for best. Second best is the worst enemy for best. So I dare say, if you are smart, when you are teaching your kids, you will teach them priorities. Set your priorities. God first, family second, friends, and work. That's my order. That's my order. We don't have enough quiet time. We don't have enough time to just sit and bask, to be in the presence of the Lord. Now, I know you remember me uh, leading silent retreats and a lot of you laughed and said, that's funny, I can't believe you're leading silent retreats. Well, I couldn't either, but I did lead silent retreats. But let me tell you something. It started probably 10 years before that, the interest in silent retreats. Because what I found was a time where I could spend in the presence of the Lord. I'm not saying spend all day. I'm not saying spend all morning. I'm not saying you have to even spend an hour. I'm saying start. Start. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Work up to where you have time with God. But you see, what I have found out that all of my stuff 
my stuff. And believe me, I have stuff. My stuff is the absolute angst in my, myself. Too much material, too many prayer beads, too many clothes, too many pairs of shoes, too many pins. If those of you remember, I have a pin fetish and I had boxes and boxes of pins. Really? Really? When you, have, when you only don't, you need one or two? Stuff gets in the way. So then we come to the good soil. And you see where this point in time right here, all of a sudden I started growing. That's about the time I was in school and gone into the ministry. And it, it, the ministry doesn't have anything to do with it. That's my calling. That's not your calling, that's my calling. But your calling takes place and you give it full, full um, 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 attention, but you, if it's not with God, you still have to have that time with God. Let me tell you something. I have agonized, agonized since my 40s how long it took me to have a heart-based faith. I knew faith. I had a head-based faith. It was deep inside. I knew it. I could tell you stuff. I knew passages. I couldn't quote your scripture. My memory's horrible. But I could, I could tell you passages. Even now you start reading a passage and I can pretty much tell you what it's going to be about. I know it. It wasn't here. Those 12 inches, give or take, to come from my head to my heart, where my faith becomes legitimate, becomes a relationship with Jesus, took half of my life. But what I see... What is that? Fire? Good. We're cooking. Hey, you know what? Do you think maybe the Holy Spirit's here? Do you think maybe we're going to have flames of fire come down? Is this Pentecost? Woohoo! I love it. I love it. All right, y'all just sit until we know what's going on. Hang on. Billy's going to check. Okay, back here, focus, focus. The flames are falling, but focus. Even when our soil is hard, even when our soil is rocky, even when our soil is thorny, even when our soil is, we want it to be good, it's all a season in our life. Look at this passage from Isaiah. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. This is God talking. It shall not return to me empty, but I shall accomplish that which I propose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. That's my promise. That's my promise. Oh, my goodness. Let's all walk our talk. Let's all be good to who we are. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen, amen, and amen. Let's go. <laughs> uh. meal for the consignment sale sometime. Please get with Shelby Haygood.